Oh yes. Microphone. Hopefully I've fixed the worst of the sound problems. I suppose we'll find that out, won't we? Hmm. A way of making this sound. Well, hopefully the microphone's picking everything up clearly. Oh, so I've had the whole day trying to update the computer and then it failing completely and then spending the whole day getting it to um, <laughs> go back to what it was before. Lovely. Hello, Jason. You're here first. Well, it might just be me and you. Sadly, the cat has relocated himself. Uh, but who knows? He may yet reappear. Okay, I suppose I'd better get some paint. This is all the stuff I'd hoped I'd managed to get done already, but no. I've reorganised my uh, my paint drawer in the bone chest. What am I going to need? What am I going to need that I haven't got? Most, more to the point. I'm going to need, probably quite need, need a bit more green. and put that out. Use up the rest of this yellow ochre. So this is a subject matter. It's quite interesting. I'm going to have to be interpretive, let's say. And uh, yeah, have a bit of fun with it. Lots of negative spaces to look at. That should remain interesting. Uh, ooh. See, I'm not not happy with that previous white. I'm going to use it the rest of this. So I'm going to need plenty. <clears throat> Yeah, I think the squeezing out of paint is one of the most fun parts. So uh, I like to include it. What else are we going to need? Oh yeah, I retrieved a whole load of yellow. It wasn't quite enough to put in a tube. So put it in a bag. <laughs> I've forgotten where it is. Oh, that's not good. Is it? That's it. So I might try some of this. Um, nice bit of squishy yellow paint. So use that up before it all dries out. Put that to one side. It really looks kind of dodgy in a bag, doesn't it? Oh well. Um, what else am I going to have? I'm going to have some cobalt blue because I'm going to have some different blues going on with this. I've got my ultramarine from last week, which I'm keeping. I'll put a bit of cobalt out there. And um, because of uh, my lessons in green that nature has been giving me all summer, yes, and some cobalt turquoise. Which is quite like cerulean. Yeah, the lessons in green that nature has been giving me have been uh, to use as little green as possible. Um, do I want more? I'm going to use burnt amber with this one. Give it a bit more warmth. 
but still makes a pretty good black with ultramarine and burnt umber. It's not going to be enough. So we've got that, the pot as well. That's quite a burnt umber colour. Um, yeah, so burnt umber is very much like dark orange. So in terms of placing it on the uh, on the colour wheel, there's some more umber. We'll put that out in case I need it. Um, what else? Reds. Have a blob of alizarin. So there's orangey greens, and there's bluey greens, and there's grey greens, and there's yellowy sap greens. And all of these are better represented by the colour they're tinted by than the green, if you like. It's the green it just all comes out as green. <laughs> it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really bring things to life. So that's what I'm going to try and try and do today. And the brushes. for starters. Oh, I'm going to need some, uh, some spirit. All ready. All ready to go. Um, I'm using the board again this time. Uh, hmm. Colour shaper is going to be helpful. And um, yeah, I coated this. I've been using here. Yeah, I'll show you. Michael Harding does this. Um, what's that say? Non-absorbent acrylic primer. Um, and it. It's really nice. Um, fortunately, it only comes in white, so I have to tint it myself with acrylic paint. But as long as you don't get too much acrylic paint in there, as long as it's mostly pigment, you can get a medium tint. Um, and it doesn't absorb the oil at all, which a lot of acrylic primers, any water-based primer, will tend to do. Um, so it sort of sucks all the oil out of the paint. It goes a bit dead. So this doesn't do that. It nearly as much, but you can still get that first layer down. Um, I have to think about my composition. Uh, do I want to get right in there, get into all the shapes, maybe not get the whole plant in? Do I want to get the whole thing in? And what I often do, see I like that drape. I think the drape is more important than the plant. I think the bottom of the pot is quite important as well. I want to put that there. So if I put that there and I put this drape in, I put the pot here, most of the plant here, nice bit of white space. That's what I'm seeing. So my eye is going to the pot, it's going to the centre of the plant, and it's going across to the, sort of the top of the angle of that drape. And that triangle sits quite happily. Yeah, yeah, that sits quite happily sort of in there, in that sort of shape. So the plant might escape out the top or the bottom or the side, not the bottom. But that's okay, I'm alright with that. So let's get started. Bit of burnt umber, I think. Nice and brown. That's too brown. I'm going to put some ultramarine in that. Wow, that's formed a skin already. see how much of this paint I can keep without getting lumps in it. <laughs> no, it's just going to be lumpy. I've got a spare palette for this. <laughs> Come on. No. Doesn't want to play. Yeah, you do.
for that. Okay, I want to try and get the tones quite accurate um, right from the off. So that's very dark. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. Um, I need some tissue as well. Do we do three? I think that's everything. Now, lots of people um, watch these, and um, I hope their popularity continues. It's a all very flattering and I'm glad people are enjoying it but it's a special breed of person that comes along and joins in live so nice to see you all A rag, I think I might be all right. Okay, where was I? Triangle, da, 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 da. yeah, it goes. There's that one leaf that goes off that direction. I can see that triangle sitting quite happily. Uh, there. Yeah, it does it goes up there. Kind of thing. That's great. Mm -hmm. Just below halfway is the top of the pot. So that pot's actually quite quite small in the scheme of things. Um, if it's that tall, let's do a bit of measuring. I don't always do measuring, but sometimes it's quite useful. No, it's almost square, just slightly tall today. Um, eyeball it. Yeah, that's about right. Um, there we go. And it's in a tray as well. And dig in about there. And stick out about here. The trunk that leads up a bit, and then some big shapes here. Just point down to that there. Yeah, that is kind of one leaf. Hmm. Yeah, just goes all the way out there. Again, we've got this point here. So, if I can get the sort of the rough idea of what's where yes yeah, so that's probably a bit further over i've got to be rougher i've got to be i think i'm going to get an awful lot of the planting think of the big shapes it makes there's a big triangle there mm -hmm -hmm. it comes out of this goes that way Down here, that probably sticks out a bit further. That comes off the bottom of it. That's sort of parallel, mix up with a chunk of stuff. And that will cut that off there. And that goes all the way down to the level of the pot. So in relation to that, so there's a negative space. Yes. Okay, so I'm getting some of the big shapes in. That is going to get off the end. That's okay. Um, so I'll get some blocks of colour in before I start fiddling about with this stuff too much. So yes, this here, maybe that goes a lot further up. I think it will actually, which I think puts that line further up here. But let's just, 
as a shape. It's almost like an echo. Yeah, an echo of the trunk shape. Yeah, that's good. That comes all the way through here. Yeah, okay, I'm seeing it now. Oh, I'm seeing some interesting colours on the inside as well. So yeah, so this is sort of just a bit of drawing and letting the information reveal itself to me um, in a way that hopefully will make some sense later on. It's getting generally familiar. I'm intersecting. I'm seeing this triangle here. I don't know where the tops of those leaves are. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is all way too dark as well, this, but I'm going to scrub it out in a moment. No, that needs to be lower down. That's that middle chunk in the middle. Oh, yeah, it'll be down here somewhere. There you are. There's that loop of the fabric. Maybe a bit higher up. Okay. I'm just going to use what's on the brush and make a much thinner, inkier version of this. Start getting some tone in. Get some tone there. There's a whole load of tone in here. There's that negative space. That kind of gets carved into several. That big shape there. This one sticks out and it comes down off the end of it. That is level with this. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. As is that. And that. So yeah, so this plant pot might grow a bit. Anyway, I've got to keep that rough at the moment. I can't be too fussy. It sort of looks too squat. I don't know why. I do know why, it's because my drawing's shoddy, but I'm sure I can improve that as it goes along. Yeah, a bit more light space into that. Tuck in a bit more at a point down here. And there's sort of this explosion of shapes. I, I really want to get that feeling, but it's not going to be... I'm not going to do it by just doing uncontrolled flicky marks. I'm going to do it by building those shapes up, but recognizing sort of the origin of them and their, where they start and stop. Yeah, that needs to be higher up. I think I've moved the bottom, I've moved the pot down rather than change all this drawing. I can, now I can see that shape there. I can see the chunk of this there. That's going to be where the pot goes. Something like that. Let's get another brush for scrubbing. There you, go. you can start to see the value of a non-absorbent surface now, because I really can bring it right back. So I'm to make it slightly brown of this. So I'm still I'm still using much too too much paint at the beginning, but you know what to hell with it, I can always take it away afterwards. Okay. 
bit more shade over here as well just because that's where a lot of the lights and the leaves are so get the excess off go back to that blue and say so that is going to come no so that's all right it's already in the right place it's going to come out there it's going to come out there that's probably enough drawing now anyway i think i've fiddled with this plenty hmm. yeah, there's all sorts of stuff going on here i'm not going to get into tiny fine details he says promising himself and then i'll probably break that promise to myself as soon as I start painting but uh, I'll, I'll try not to there you go. so that's that some tone in there please come all the way down as long as I get the language of it of how it appears it should be okay if I can keep some reasonably solid bits of paint doing the work for me. Is that right? No, that should be a bit further over. And then this should also be further over. Again. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josie. Yes, um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I've got I've got the big microphone working. Uh, so there's a, like a daisy chain of several interfaces that that can speak to each other, but um, but yeah, uh, none of them can speak directly to the software apart from one. And I can't plug the microphone into that, so I have to have various things to plug the microphone into to get it there. Oh, see, there, there's an interesting little flicky bit going around. Okay, I'm getting caught up now in little details. And so I've got some of that language going in. What else is there? So there's little bits and pieces. That, that's going to be important. That's going to do a job for me. This needs to be steeper. Take a bit more of that away. Okay, I think I can. Uh, I can let that dry now and do a bit of. Um, Do a bit of mixing. Get some of that light. I'll come back to that later on. Yeah. So there's no point getting fiddly with the drawing at that stage because it's all going to get covered up. So I'm going to let that spirit evaporate and. Um, oh. My screen's gone blank, I hope it's still working there. seems to be doing it. Um, hmm. Right, so what am I going to need? I've rather overdone things with the, that dark mix. Um, last time, what did I do last time? Oh, yeah. Um, is that it? No, it's gone. Yeah, last time. Let's just see if I can find it next time. There we are. Oh yeah, the um the gladioli. I can't remember. 
But yeah, that. And what I did was I mixed dark, and I used that dark to darken all the local colours. Um, so yeah, that came out all right. I've got papers I paint more, so that's a good sign. Um, Yeah, but I don't think I'm going to do that this time. This time I'm going to be looking for visual colour. <laughs> and um, Yeah, mixing it bit by bit as I go along. But I'm still going to do the basics. I'm still going to get a light and a dark for the background. And a few basic colours, a basic light and dark for the plant. Almost all of the pot and the trunk bit are dark, so I could probably use one for those. So let's get that background in. It's a nice creamy bit of paint. I'm going to put some yellow ochre in that. And that's too yellow. I want to neutralise that a bit. Um, I'll do with a bit of purple, I guess. Let's put a bit of blue in there. Which will make it greeny. And then just dab a little bit of red. That's still a bit green. This is still this is a very light colour, so that's as light as I want to get. So I put that to one side, and then there's bits in it. Let's pick up some of that and let's make a whole load of darker colour. It's the rather muddy green that comes from ultramarine and, and uh, yellow ochre. If I put some alizarin and crimson in that, it should neutralise the greenness. Yeah, is that, is that what I'm seeing? No, it needs to be bluer than that. But even so, this is still a light colour. And I only know this from experience. And it's not what my eyes are telling me. My eyes are telling me, oh, that's your dark colour. That's going to be fine as your dark colour. It's nowhere close. What is my dark colour going to be? I think I'm going to use a little bit of about turquoise because that's already green if I add red to that that would give me a muddy kind of purple colour let's stick some white in it oh it's gone too light again already I need a decent quantity of paint to do this let's borrow some of that Okay, it's definitely going to have to be brown. I'm going to have to be looking for dark colours. I've already got the burnt umber going, so let's put some of that in. I'm really, I'm really experimenting with this. Oh, yeah, that's quite... Oh, yeah, that's it. That's that's a colour that doesn't have a name. <laughs> yes, you just... Yeah, that was a... That was on a shelf in a DIY store. It would be one of those ones with a really peculiar name that means nothing. Um, hmm. So those shadows in this cloth are not, not as dark as this. Nowhere close. Um, but I want to I want to create that tonal jump. That pot 
it's pretty much the darkest part of the whole thing. So if I get a lump of, I talked about making a black with burnt umber and ultramarine earlier. There we are. A lump of ultramarine out of there. Try and get all the little bits off it. Now look at that jump there. It's huge. Um, you can't see the subject matter particularly well, I'm afraid, because of the contrast, because I've got quite a lot of light on it. Quite a bright light. That's a close-up softbox. Um, and this hasn't got the same light source. What I might try and do, see if this makes it better. That's an improvement. Might make it all light at the top. That's a bit better, I suppose. Okay, and then we'll So the next step is to get these colours on. See what they uh, see what they do. But that that is not dark enough. It's going to have to be a lot darker. That is another one of my lights. I said when I put the white in it was too light. So let's go again. Let's get the rest of that ultramarine out. Whatever we can dig out of it. I think I'm going to have to get another tube out later. Um, I started with a bit of this. A bit of light, just a little bit. It needs to be more purpley. More of that, and more blue. So this is quite close to this. So that goes well. So we can lighten it a bit more. Let's try and get that jump from there to there. Maybe I'll mix it next to it over here. Maybe I'll borrow a little bit of that. Now I'm starting to see it. That is much more like it. it needs to be pinker though. I can't let that purpliness that comes from this turquoise. Okay, I think that's going to work. We'll see. Um, hmm. So yeah, let's get a background on. I'll try and have some respect for the uh, the drawing I've already done, but not too much to be honest. Um, but just so I've got an idea of what roughly goes where. And I'll keep these colours on the palette so I can come back to them. I'll probably clear this bit off and use that for a little my greens and my submixes. Um, okay, yeah, so darkest bit first. Let's do that. Where was it? Came from over here. Looks quite light on the canvas. Sort of comes in here and in here. So, yeah, I'm seeing all sorts of other colours, but I'm not worrying about it just yet. I'm just getting these basic bits in. enough though. A bit of a brush 
mix. Let's see where this goes. That's darker. Yeah, a bit more yellow ochre as well. So I'm kind of jumping ahead to these other colours I can see. There's definitely some greens in there. And part of that's the shadow of. Yeah. Part of that's the shadow of uh, of the plant as well. I think it's a bit darker there. And in there. And up right up at the edge. I'm drawing a bit more of that dark, putting it in here. Going back to the purpley one. Don't have to change brush really. There we go. Don't have something on there. Ah, oh, there it is. Get it off. that yellow go. And I can't see anywhere else it belongs. There is a bit in there. It needs to be slightly lighter. Okay, well right then I've committed now I'm mixing paint. <laughs> yeah, that light comes in there. There we'll come back to that later. Where else can I see this? No, it's pinker there. Um, all right, probably it's time to give this brush a wipe. Get the excess off. Um, let's go to that next colour up. I've got this yellowy light green colour. Yeah, I'll mix that in with what I've got on the surface. There's a bit in there as well. That'll do. And that's that colour that was in there that I could see. And under here. There's quite a bit under there. Okay, back to that shadow. Anyway, I'm not spending enough time to do that properly. Where else can I see it? Up here. to the shadow it's quite hard to see it it creeps in there Let's 
Ez hevésen ez, ez van. light up there I'm not going to worry about where it's okay so we've got a little bit of a visual journey going on Let's get another brush where have all my tens gone oh well we'll use an eight okay there's this greeny one here which is light enough, it's too green, so I'm going to neutralize that with a bit of red, pink it up, that's much more like it. That's kind of my light color going across there, now that light line does a job definitely. It's even pinker down there. It's still a creamy colour. I quite like the fade out on that. That's good. Quite a bit more pink in there. A bit more light. And that'll do for these bits here. Okay, that's that. And that negative space is in the right place, which is great. Now it's now it's going to start to build my image for me. There's going to be a bit. There's going to be a bit. It's going to be a great big bit there. Anyway, I'm going to get caught up in too many details too soon. We'll get the general idea. Crikey, so that's 45 minutes already. fly when you're having fun. Yeah, oh yeah, that was my brownie shadow. Which comes across the top of that and carries on over here. Which means that lighter colour actually gets even brighter over here. my drawing a little bit there. I've got the rough idea. Like I said, I can always take stuff away and put it in. Oh yeah, I wasn't going to do all those folds there. So I brighten that right up. surface okay and then hopefully as we go on I'm going to darken this a little bit and put yet more red in it which will help make a new greenness that sits on top get some pink in there
yeah, that's going to have to get a lot pinker. That's quite light, so I'll figure that out later on. Where else is pinker? Oh, kind of in here. It's like shadow shapes. So I'll get some more light on that later. Right there. Yeah, the pink underneath it has quite a bit in there. I say pink, I mean it's just it's a not not very strong red. It fits in quite nicely with that background colour as well. So I just scrub that in before we get away with it. And then hmm sort of reflects from behind there. Where else? In here, the whole reflection of it there. We bring some of it into these shadows, which at the moment are looking too green. How much can I get away with here? This has been brave now. Yes! Um, then when, yeah, when the green goes on top, it should hopefully create sense of it being more green which means I can actually use less real green and more of the accent colours the the visual colours and the the greenness will be almost replaced by the colour of the background. Okay, how fussy do I want to be about the drawing here? Not especially. It's just the general language of the shapes is going to do that job. Don't want to worry too much about the shadows behind that either. Yeah, so this is it here. It's these shapes jump up to about here, and we've got up a bit there, a couple of bits there. And join up with these. something going against the direction of the leaves for a bit of variety. Oh, that's really changed, isn't it? Bring some of that in here. some kind of a background in. Let's bring a bit more of that into here. A bit more of that light down there. Only a bit there. That's fine. That's plenty. And what about down here? There's a whole flash of light there. I might even brighten that up more later on. Where it gets really bright, which is on that tabletop at the front, which is going to give me, you know what, that's where the pot's going to go. Keep it rough and simple. That's all shadow behind there. greeny grey shadow as well. But it's still light in that bit of background. Yes, I've got a balance going on now. It's taking care of me. Hooray! Okay, I'm going to stop for a little break.
because I do tend to do that. And also it gives you a chance to step back and realize all the things you've done horribly wrong. Um, I need to clean these brushes as well. Just for the sake of uh, getting that in there. It needs to be really bright up here. I'm going to break into that light with the leaves. That pinkiness should come through. Just a bit of light in there. So quite thin, scrubby marks, so the green will go over the top of it quite happily. Yeah, something like that. Hmm. Actually, I'm still not quite done there. This bit doesn't seem quite right. Yeah, that's the bit I'm brightening up. No, that's okay. Actually, I'll take that back. That's good enough. Looks like that little explosion of um, shape that you get from this. And there's this hard edge on here. What's that do? Jumps into that. Right. Well, um, I feel like I'm close to ironing out all the kinks with this whole live stream process thing. Uh, but if there's any other suggestions or things you'd like to see or ways you think it could be more entertaining, and there's plenty of those, then uh, do feel free to send me some feedback. Let me know your thoughts. And... Um, yeah, um, I'm going to start editing them as well, once I actually promote it properly. There will be edited videos, and uh, all the previous ones will be labelled as prototype or test live streams or whatever, so 
just for the hardcore. Um, people with a serious interest. Yep. Um, you may get some entertainment from the cat chewing the plant um, in the next few minutes, so watch out for that.
back again. Um, right. Let's see what happens next. This should be fun. Uh, I'm going to gather up the paint I've already mixed. Nice to see so many people still here as well. <laughs> it's very flattering. But um, hopefully, uh, just on in the background, you're not paying too much attention. So I've become self conscious of that case, and you wouldn't want that. Okay. There's actually not that much paint there. But it means I can always mix more. I probably won't need much. It'll just be for touching up little areas here and there. Yeah. Let's clear this whole bit of palette. And that. Don't need that. using it by accident. Okay. If the brushes are clean. Yeah, I should point out this isn't a how-to guide. I've got all sorts of terrible habits which you should never do. So um, this is probably one of them. But whatever works, you know, you get used to doing things in a way that makes sense to you and that you're familiar with the outcome. very much to Rose and Jason for lovely comments and uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get this last bit done in about 45 minutes that's the plan whether that actually happens or not we shall see yeah let's see what's that doing there Um, I was, I was uh, singing the praises of um, the Michael Harding non-absorbent primer earlier, but I, I'm not sponsored by them, um, and I don't use enough of that, you know, um, any particular brand of paint. I don't think to ever for it to be worth being sponsored. But if anyone who makes kitchen towel wants to sponsor me, I think I'd save a fortune. Very practical stuff and biodegradable. Okay, I'm gonna make two local colours. Uh, that's some um, Taylor green. It's quite an intense colour. I used to use Viridian quite a lot, and um, I never ever use it anything remotely close to pure so um, as a tinting colour Viridian is so expensive so I just I just don't bother with it uh, now um, interestingly the uh, Talo Green Talo Cyanin Green I think it's called um, PG7 that's the pigment number and that's what they use with Viridian Hue 
So in student paint, you get exactly the same pigment, and it's only one pigment. So single pigment paints are generally better because they haven't, you know, that pigment hasn't been mixed with anything else. So whatever, whenever you mix it, that's the first mix, you know. So it won't muddy as quite as quickly. Um, yeah, let's have a look at what this does. Check this out. Oh, <laughs> that's intense. Chuck a bit more of that in. Yeah, so that's a way stronger green than I would ever need. I might try and sneak this actual colour in there somewhere. I can't really think of where it would go, but once there's some kind of colour harmony going on, I might I might I might be able to do it. What should I do? Let's take a little bit of that and just put it next to the green. Right, so I'm gonna chuck a whole lump of yellow ochre in here. And that sort of softness of the yellow ochre has tamed this fairly quickly. And as a local colour, it feels pretty good to the colour of the leaves of the yucca plant. Uh, and like I said, I mean, I really love yucca plants. They, they look like an explosion. Um, the cat also loves yucca plants, but apparently for different reasons to me. Um, I'm not in the habit of rubbing my face on that one. Um. <laughs> he sat on the chair watching me on the screen. <laughs> okay, that's a local colour. I've got this very dark colour I mixed. Let's add some of that to that. That's quite brown, so I'll probably get away with a bit more green on top of that. Let's see how, how deep that can go. Yeah, that works pretty well. This is still quite, quite on the blue side. So I did say I would get some of this, um, this yellow going as well. I'm going to take some of that off there. Okay, let's try a bit of this. Ooh. This is the point where I should be wearing gloves because this is going to get everywhere if I'm not careful. Grainy is it, this colour. Yeah, it's just about as intense as I'm going to want to go with this. bits, weirdly actually darker bits where that's quite applicable as a colour. Um, let's do a slightly lighter version of that. And let's get that extra yellow off the top and mix in. There'll definitely be a bit of this going on. I'll put some oil in there. Oop. Should be pretty handy when the time comes. Right. Yeah, so maybe just a dark and a light aren't going to work on this.
and keep that there. All right, okay, do that then, fine. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's that yellowy one. It's too yellowy. I'll just use some of the light that's on the knife to lighten that up. It's too intense a colour. I need to bring the intensity from somewhere else. So I'm going to soften that down a bit with a bit of red. We'll have some red in your green. Yeah, that softens it down quite a bit. In fact, I'll go a little bit further, I think. Push that right back. That was already too blue, a little bit of red, and then what's on the knife? Should soften that back too. Yeah, very subtle change. You probably can't tell this on the camera, but anyway, I'm fussing too much about this because the moment I go to actually put it on, it'll be the wrong colour. <laughs> Let's not worry too much about it. Okay, that's half past. Dark shapes. Let's go from the middle outwards. That's not dark enough. I need a darker one. How exciting. Let's put that there. Yeah, let's put this over here. A bit more green. Probably a bit too dark there. Very subtly lighten it up. If I just mix in what's on the brush, I should do it. Let's put the darks in first and go dark to light. Uh, the lights to go over the top of, for it to go over the top of. Okay, let's get to that mid green then. Into this one, that's going to do it. Um, the brush was too wet, but it's all right. I'll just get the scrubby colour in underneath. So, you know, that should be much more yellow. Maybe the yellow one then. That's it. It's hard to figure out what's going over the top of what. There's definitely some bright greens going in there and in there. And they can gradually turn into yellows later on. What about down here? That's going to be, that's going to be the bluer one. In. Yeah, there's not that much lighter I can go, so. Right. Yeah, I said I'd do all the dark bits. I'm going to do all the dark bits first. Work the light over the top. I'm 
not getting these points. The points are actually important. So I'm going to get some oil in that. Mm. to seal the ply thinly. I'm doing this out of prima so it's all one layer so I can put oil in on the first layer and get away with it. Yeah, some lights to go in there afterwards but I'm not going to worry too much about where they go. Start with the point and spread out. Close enough. Yeah, that's mixing too much on the surface. Told you I'd need this. Let's clear a space. Much better. sort of comes out from the inside and reach down here that's going to be the side of the pot which is definitely going to get off the bottom of the off the canvas now <laughs> but that's okay I'm all right with that so I've got to keep the energy of these pointy leaves up there's other colours going in afterwards, as and when they're needed. So, you know, as I go along, I could actually borrow a bit of that green. A yellower version of this dark colour. Put them in where they go. There is some. the way the paint mixes on the surface be part of the language of it what about here I did leave a space for that that's fine no it's, no, it's not it's not dark enough let's go back to this that should be about the same tone as the shadow that's pretty close Darker, dark over here. Keep it quite sharp. There we are. That's more like it. Hmm. That can come out of there. That can come out of there. Flick out of there. There's light to go over the top of this, but most of this is dark. And that's that big leaf I was talking about at the beginning. It comes right out. Flick that trail off. And these ones are kind of hard to tell apart, so I've just got to try and get the language of them. I'm back to a green, a green here anyway. Some of them are pointing towards me, some of them are pointing away. Still, all the darks first. 
there's not enough paint. I need to mix a lot more paint, really get it thick and gooey. There's a couple of verticals, but there's quite a few bits that are coming off here. No. Do I need a softer brush? I think I do a longer one. No. That's a new long flat. How terribly exciting. Let's see if it does the job. Yes, it does. It's off in the distance. It's a bit more nearby. No, not fluid enough. Okay, yeah, these shapes are starting to come up. Now, I'm seeing also where I'm going to have to come back in with some background colour. Just to finish that off. It's getting lighter here as well. Let's go back into this. Still quite muted. A lot of it's sort of in shadow, effectively. Yeah, so that needs to be behind. That's just this. We're getting quite s simple and gentle marks. These are the leaves at the back. Oh no, that one goes behind. As does that one. This one comes in front, and this is a much yellower. So I'll mix a yellower version here. And here. I'll put some more light in that later. First things first. It's got a shadow at the top. Okay. This is starting to take care of my drawing now. Yeah, we go back to that yellow that's got the light coming through it. Is that going to be alright? something different. That's browner. Put some of that over here. And over here.
Yeah, again, talking about the language of how the leaves arrange themselves. Yeah, there's a bit of green in there. Enough to work into there, I think. Back to some of those darks. Let's just figure out what goes in front of what. Maybe I shouldn't worry about that too much. Rather than thinking of what goes in front of which. I should just start piecing together some of these colours and shapes now. That is a much bigger leaf. It gets all the way off the edge. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of that blue. And I'm going to try and get it to the right tone. I should push some of these towards the back. Yeah, I'm going there. Yes, there's a big leaf at the front here that I haven't done. Where else can I see this? I've got to relax, just let my eye find it. Yeah, there's a big bit there. Actually, a bit in there as well. Where else is it? It's in here. It's in here. The light on the side of that, and on here. And some of it, and the light on the side of that. And the veins in the leaf. And there's some in there as well. That actually I can get away with it, making it even more intense. Yeah, that's fun. Push that into the background. There's definitely some on the inside of that, yeah, which is where I started. Pulls the light out on the inside. In here, I'll keep that in the background. There's a darker mark there. Now, there's a few things I can do. very darks but I don't want to do it just yet and that is using red. The red going in the green neutralizes it, makes it less green. So if you want, as the colors get darker they also become less green. Yeah, that cobalt blue I was talking about using. Let's see how much we can get away with. Oh. sort of connects these different parts together. So when I want to um, uh, make something look even darker, then using red as ungreen is quite an effective way of doing that. What does that do? So these Blues are still part of that green family. I'm using a bit more intensity to kind of hopefully use some of that light. Just 
to uh, hopefully bring them to life a little bit. Um, uh, there's an edge of a leaf there. Yeah, that will make a bit more sense later. Right here. That's going to be the top of that one when it eventually arrives. It's going to be a very dark blue underneath. In fact, almost a purpley blue. So let's get that red going. So is that too purple? Let's have a look. I think it probably is. I don't know, it weirdly kind of works. It went better for the background. In there. Is that whole shape and then when it goes into the green yeah all sorts of interesting things happening here now hmm. it's also some in the trunk but I'll, I'll just put that into the placeholder there's a big leaf to go in the front of that i'll be clearing space for afterwards that does need a bit of purple as does that for its shadow. Where else? There's a few bits in here, a few little flicks. Yeah. That does it. There's a bit of a light coming out of there. Okay, what else? That with a bit of light in it. The shape that comes out here. Okay, is that too purple now? Not quite, I don't think. in that as and when it's necessary. the green almost as a yellow here. A bit more yellow ochre. A little bit of red. That's way too much red. It's quite a muted, quite a subtle orange. But it'll still be useful. I'm going to put some of that brighter yellow in it. In here. Yeah, there's sort of orangey edges to some of the leaves. Where else? Where else? There's a bit in there. There's some in that one, that light that turns up in the middle of it. What about in here? Not really. Um, mm, that one, that's the big one for the front. Maybe we'll start putting that in. Um, what else? Maybe do a slightly lighter version. Yeah, there's some in that. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to see this in a way now. Oh, there's a bit in there. Yeah, it's starting to turn up in its way. No, that's not right. Yeah, 
It's a bit more like that one. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I missed it. I put too much light in it. A bit there. Some in there too. And there, there's this sort of dip in the leaf that comes out quite orangey. Yeah, and that's what I get in here as well. There's some. It's weird how it works. Again, let's get back into the language of it. What's shooting out where? I'm locking this brush. So you get a whole bit of yellow going on here. Is this too soon? Is it too soon for the yellow? Mute it a bit with that orangey green I made. And so where does that go? It goes in here. No, that's all right. Do I need new oil in it? So again, that yellowy green I made, I didn't need to, I just needed a bit of yellow. Bit of oil in there. There's some. Yeah, a bit more light. These little flicks of. Yeah, it brings it to life. Top corner of that. Oh, I made two marks when I shouldn't have done. Don't fuss with it too much. Definitely a bit in there. And that light comes across. This is the edge of the other leaf. There's some bits in there. I'm not even going to worry about exactly where they go, but that uh, that leaf travels back across. Yeah, so those original light green marks I made. Yeah, now I've got that. There's some in there. One of those is almost completely. Yeah. It comes back out of here. So these particular colours I'm finding sort of join these things. These are little observations together. Oh, that's too that's too much. Right, yes, this leaf. Not that one. It's the whole other one. That one cuts across it. It goes in here. Hmm. So it's getting away from me. So, okay, I'm going to put a lot of light into this blue now. See some of those pale blue bits. There's a bit there. There's a few bits in there. Again, some of these little flicks I'm doing, I'm not really looking that closely at what it is I'm doing. I'm just trying to react to what's there, get a feeling of it. That's a whole bit there. That's got some light coming across it. The blues do a rather lovely job on this. Um, 
Yeah, whole ledge on that. Oh, a lot of these. There's a lot of pale blue up here. Make your mind up. Where is it? Which one are you painting? Where does it go? Some of it into here as well. Not quite as purple, but it's there. Not more light. What time does that make it? Oh, it's the hour. So that's the end of my 45 minutes then. Um, what did I say I was going to do? Some red to accentuate the dark bits. Let's do that. Let's just put a load of red into that dark bit there. Let's see how this works. Especially to get those shapes where the leaves sort of flick out. And then on this side as well. There's quite a lot in that stalk to stem, whatever you'd call it. There's quite a lot. Oh, get some of that raw umber, that burnt umber, sorry, going. Get some blue in it, just take it down a bit. Make it a bit more purpley. Let's get some of those shapes going. That's some. Um, Some um, that's a shadow there. Boom. Something like that. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that does it. Oh yeah, there's a lighter colour reflecting off this. I'll get that in later. There's a deep shadow coming in here. And that sort of blends in a bit. I get caught up in the detail too much. I keep telling myself that and I keep doing it. Right. <laughs> It was like, oh yeah, that light, that works nicely. Let's put some of that in here. And even clean my brush. Encourage that soil. That's pretty good. Right, a bit more yellow, a bit lighter. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to lighten that. Um, that sheet behind. getting over with that tray anyway it's not an important part of the image so I'm not going to worry about it that's darker in the middle let's get a load of yeah that does its job Oh, 
prism we're seeing in here. Let me get some really bright yellow on that now. There. That's beautiful. Here. Or oh no, yeah, so that should have come out from that point. It should have come out from this point. That should have a little sort of Yeah. Ooh, not quite. Really bright green bit on the top. Like a line down the middle. Oh, I've mucked that up totally. Okay. Where else? Here. And here. Oh, I'm sort of starting to get the feel. And in there. And in here. Those greens are coming back now. Underneath there, there's a little dash of that. Oh, that red. So I need some more of these brushes, obviously. They're great. What is it? Oh, it's from Jackson's. It's synthetic long flat Akoya. Well, good stuff. Thank you, Jackson's. This is really just red, but this goes right up the middle here. Let's see if I can. Get some more of those shapes explaining themselves as they come out. What about in here? Oh, yeah, that works. And that doesn't. So it's quite a lot of that green colour there. Didn't use much of it. Okay, now I'm starting to fiddle. So that's probably nearly time. Let's get a bit of that dark in front of there. Get back to that yellow again. If I can get the starting point of the stroke right. I should do it. No, I didn't. Well, that works there. A bit more light. So again, back to that background colour I had, let's put that there, let's chuck a whole load of white in it, let's make it a little bit pinker, a little bit, not too much, let's see how much we need to brighten this, there, that needs to be a lot brighter doesn't it? a whole lot brighter. Right, those negative shapes, they're going to be helpful if we get them right. So some of that light travelling up across the cloth. Hmm. That works okay, doesn't it? Break things up a bit, get some of the rhythm going. Now all around here is just going to be flat lights. And that exploding shape of the leaves is getting accentuated by it, hopefully. Where else? So yeah, let's put a bit in there. 
little triangle of it in there. Two shapes there. Okay, this is all lighter here. There's the shape of it. This whole shape there. Uh, that comes across. Okay, yeah. That's doing its job. I can work it in a little bit as well. Soften all of this down. Let's do a little ridge of light that comes across here, travels across the top of that leaf. Definitely in here. There's a negative space. There's another one. It's breaking everything up a little bit. About in there. That needs to be a lot brighter. As does that. We put a few highlights on here. There's one. There's one. Anything else? There's one. A little bit round there. A little freak off the bottom of that. Needs to be a lot lighter. quite fun. Yeah, definitely need that. Soften that down in there a bit. I'm fiddling now. Can I hear a distant chorus of stop fiddling with it? Stop fiddling with it. <laughs> oh, hello, this is Elizabeth. Nice to have you back. All right. Well, everyone's been very kind and also patient with this particular one. Um, I'm going to do a last few bits. And I think the main one is going to be just making that pot make sense. It's not the most important thing in the picture, but it'll be off-putting if it's done badly. So let's get that shape in there. Put a few of those little flicks there. And use a bit of that red, make, a, make something of an echo around the image. That's good enough actually. Uh, use the red for the signature as well then I guess. Well, 
thank you everyone for joining me and um, presumably shouting encouragement. <laughs> I mean, who knows what's going on? But uh, there we go. Stop fiddling, stop fiddling. Hey! And I haven't got too much paint to over myself, which is always always a positive when that happens. Probably shouldn't really wipe my hands with white spirit, but um, it only causes chemical burns under occlusion. So uh, specifically, if you have a jar of it leak. Um, all over your clothes and then you put socks on and then after two hours your ankles are burning um, but when it just evaporates which that has already then uh, <laughs> it's not so bad right let's have a good look at this then that's the subject matter there that's my view and here Well, let's see if that can stay up right. So I hope that's I hope that's nice and clear. Anyway. So it's decided to slant, and there's nothing I can do about it. that there for a moment. Oh. Come on. Behave. Okay, I think that's better. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, coming along and joining in. And um, I'm going to launch this all properly soon, I hope. Um, so you'll be hearing all about it. <laughs> okay, this is the last bug to work out, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, I'll be starting to sell these uh, super cheap um, and um, through my Patreon page and uh, putting edited videos up there. And these ones will still be free and on Facebook and YouTube for a month. Um, so there'll always be usually at least three or four there. And um, yeah, uh, keep your eyes peeled and um, keep an eye on things. And if anyone's got any particular suggestions, polite ones, then um, I'm very glad to hear them. Thanks very much for coming. <laughs>